Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO, which we're playing as that beautiful Republic of Komi. But we have a few events to get through as we try to get the funny clock man eventually. The two officers stare at the twisted corpse, his head curled to the side in a sick caricature of curiosity. One what one, must have once been clothes hang to the side, limp and sodden with blood. Around his neck dangles the title, Social Fascists Will Not Be Spared When the Revolution Comes. The stump of an arm, surely the amputation must have been as recent as it was violent, is tied off and secured with a little party badge. One of Osneski's men, perhaps. Officer Temorovich, Temorovich nods mechanically to his deputy. Please note, case t 20, type 24D, Class B physical trauma. Prepare for physical examination back at the morgue. No further in instructions. He ambles off for a smoke, and Deputy Sadkov begins to rack, wrap the body in medical gauze. How long have they done this? The two of them. A dance back forth, back and forth, and back again across the Republic, picking up the shredded remains of life after life to dispose of in as tasteful a fashion as possible. The political crimes division is nothing more than a sick joke, and the officers of its hopeless war are jesters in the courts of the powerful. Crimes Unseen Crimes unseeable. Crimes that are discovered and hastily covered up as with some idiot child that might spew up some inconvenient familial truth at the dinner table. Sadok's, uh, Sadkov's hands tremble as he covers the eyes. He is tired, so very, very tired, and yet the charade goes on. Not far from him, Demorovich wonders why there's only been one reported murder case this week. It has a precipitous drop from previous months. He rubs his stubble and then it hits him like a lead iron socket in the belly. They're preparing for election week, all of them. Oh, we changed our focus here, right here. So, actually, we have another event too. Set up the facts. On the eastern side of Sik Siktivkar, there stood a short, two-story building which was completely insignificant for outsiders but was not unknown for a particular lot. Written down in the documentation as a residency for local topography, the purpose of which is unknown even to their editors, the place served as a meeting hub for supporters and members of the Pashinari and Gumilov circle, being an occasional headquarters and even a recruitment ground, the low profile and formal legality of their work allowed to keep their work going without disruptions, without any need to fear the eyes of overly suspicious people. The arrival of figures in Soviet uniforms at the doorstep caught the personnel off guard. The leader, a balding, pudgy, middle-aged man, was not an unfamiliar foe to f or unfamiliar face to many of them, but no one could p place him with the names they knew, and his cold and severe look suggested that they knew exactly why he was here. The presence of the intruders would be instantly alarming if it wasn't for the lack of weapons on their hands and a small detail of the co torn off communist badges on their clothes. An unacceptable violation for the people of their service. After a short, awkward moment of silence, the leader of the Soviet mil militants took the initiative. Ivan Alexandrovich, Seraf, ex NKVD and fierce patriot of the motherland, I have a very favorable offer for your boss, Gumeleyev. A pleasure to meet you, comrade. Ooh. Increases the influence of the right by a large amount. National Socialist Party will now be called Ordo Sociality. Oh, crud. A pleasure to meet you. And right now, we have one day left, so interlude just must do it. And we switched our focus tree over. A new focus. And we saw these. Cool. So we already done this, which we had the options to do, but. This eventually does go away. I, I just realized that this says 1962, 1962, but the 1963 assembly, it is February 24th. The time has come. Each year a new assembly is elected to the legislative house of Comey, and this election is no different than every year's election. A high-stakes contest where each candidate for the head of the house campaigns to control the republic and everything valuable within. As per tradition, it is now time to choose our candidate for leader of the Democratic Party. Each of the three candidates, Vosnesky, Kosygin, and Stalina, will express their positions and why exactly they deserve to be the leader of the Democrats and the people. After, we will select a candidate who hopefully will be the best choice for our nation. I can't wait, and they refuse tribute, which we are going to fight the Order of St. George. If you would like to read this, go right ahead. But here we will go, because we don't want to waste time. And we still have, oh, we could do political, we could probably do that. So much more poverty rate. And we do have more political power now, just because I think some of the focuses actually gave it to us. I Between the, each episode, I usually try to get through the last, the focus that we end on, just so we can start the next one, the, this the next episode, uh, with doing a new focus or almost close to it so let's go ahead and prove that it was well 19 favors doesn't matter 35 political power i'm going to go ahead and grab secure control because i want even more stability we must be a very stable nation and the opening of the 63 assembly the annual assembly of the democratic coalition for the 1963 took place in sick cars one good hotel perhaps by virtue of its lack of competition the hotel's quality left something to be desired but it was indoor, it wasn't in ruins, and the staff mostly kept the attending guests fed with a steady stream of passable food and piping hot tea. Ooh, but I've got some coffee here, not tea. Delegates from all of the coalition's parties could be seen. Chief among them were Vosnesky's colleagues and Social Democrat Party and Kosygin's Social Liberals, the twin pillar of the Democratic Coalition. 
present less in a political quality and more in their roles as important bureaucrats and power brokers of the coalition, were members of the democratic government, such as police officers, bureaucrats, and paramilitary bosses. These institutions, members, uh, tended to gra gather around Selena and her increasingly influential PSD party. The rising star of the Democratic coalition drew much attention and her courtesy visits from both other Democratic parties. If this situation bothered any of the other party chiefs, no clear evidence could be seen in their warm reception of the woman and her closest associates. Let it begin. Selena shall begin with a speech. As we're beating up the Order of St. George. Ah, good. Seize all that we can, my friends. And, ooh, equipment, workers, or methods. Doesn't really matter. We have three for poverty rate. So, like I said, I usually like going with workers, expertise. No. We actually want, ooh, ooh, workers, right? Workers, expertise is okay. Equipment is what we really want. That's what we really want. So, instead, we will go with agricultural methods. Because I explained before, basic mechanization. You get more output, pretty much. A little bit more output, more population. Actually, 20% more monthly population. 10% more crucible population. Less consumer goods that go bye-bye. So, overall, pretty good stuff. Even though I should probably save my political power up, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because we want to get some more factories. But making an example. Susla drummed his fingers against the mahogany table, gaze sweeping from official to official as it entered the chamber. The meeting itself was unimportant, a simple discussion of maintenance within party neighborhoods. The true reason Suslov had called a meeting, and the actual object of his attention, was to discover the full extent of Serov's cancerous web within the party. Those who attended the meeting were loyal, and those that supported Serov would be bo bo boycotted and protest he knew. The news of Serov's expulsion had spread like wildfire in his ears within the lower echelons of the party, giving him a list of those who were less than pleased about that department. The most vocal of which had already been removed, of course. What remained of Serov's power base would be too afraid to show their faces today, and Suslov would use that to formally purge them once and for all. At the end of the meeting, twelve seats sat unfilled, more than he had expected, but not damning. Suslov quietly turned to his assistant and ordered their names purged from the roster. A curious situation had developed, however. One of Serov's supporters, out of stupidity or bravery, Suslov wasn't sure, had attended the meeting all the while feigning innocence, an example to be had to be made then. There's one last matter we must turn to our attention to, comrades. Suslov pronounced as Two large men approached the traitor from behind. It would seem that not all of us present today are here in good faith. Some, it seems, harbor the evils of fascism within their hearts. His bodyguards grabbed the man's arms, twisted them above his head as they forced him onto the table. He screamed for help, no one, but no one answered. As I'm sure you all know, this will not be tolerated within the party. One of the men drew his pistols and pressed it against the now sobbing traitor's head. I urge you all to ensure that your hearts remain steadfast and loyal, for socialist justice meets all in the end, regardless of their past. Alexei, if you will, a gunshot rang throughout the building. A traitor's due. Ooh. And decreases the influence of the, the left. Cool. And the spoils of war. Good. We got even more rifles. Even though we have plenty of rifles over, in, but in the future we're going to need even more rifles when we actually do go to war. Because we're doing better on artillery, doing better on anti tank, but. Mm. Oh, vacuum tubing. Good. Now we can finally get to 1960s research. Transistor computing. 3% more. Faster. That would be good. Muy bueno. And Sally in his speech. She spoke first. Unattached as she was. As she was to any political organization, her message was previsible, previsible, but not unwelcome in these un these times before the mayoral madness visit Siktivka. It is a great pleasure, as always, to speak to this honorable assembly. I will not bore the esteemed member of the ruling coalition with my life once story once more, if only to under line again how this free republic took me in these difficult times for Russia. This gift of freedom and peace, of a place where we can help one another to rebuild our fractured nation. This gift of democracy enduring and untarnished, this gift uh, is one I'd heartily, I ardently wish to protect. As this assembly proceeds with the election of a candidate for the presidential camp elections, I stress to all gathered today, so debate the merits of each presidential hopeful, but once a candidate for a coalition is chosen, I implore you to follow them without hesitation. The unity of our coalition is one of our strongest weapons against the radicals that seek to bring our republic to an early end. The dogs of the Communist Party, the animals found in Comey's far-right fringes, they care not one whit for our institutions. The republic must treat this con treat this contempt with her own contempt, for democracy must defend itself at any cost. Thank you, Selena. Now let the debates begin. Are we actually building anything here? No, we're not. If that's the case, can we build roads maybe instead? No, we cannot. Oh, no, that's not good. Form coalition tickets, military violence, paramilitary violence, I should say. Encourage file sharing. Cool. Now let's get another speech, because in the last episode... Oh, there goes Madagascar. Uh, at the end of the last episode, we were reading so many events, and I like the events, but sometimes, if it's day after day after day, I'm like, hmm... Kind of drags on, but Kosygin's speech. The leader of the SMR, Kosygin, was next. His own rhetoric was not warm and passionate like Stalina. Rather, the formal e former economist made a clear, concise case. His words stripped from needless extravagance after the customary round of thanks to the assembly and the congratulations given to Vosnesky's and Stalina for their efforts in the coalition. Kosygin reached the heart of his speech. 
The Germans have squandered the wealth of their nation in fuel and bombs for a terror bombing campaign that has accomplished very little. Now the frequency of bombings dwindles by the day. Rumors coming from Moscovine detail the upcoming collapse of the Reich. My friends, once the German plans are gone, we shall be free to rebuild. We've kept hope all these years. Our children were taught as best as possible. Our homes were cleaned of debris where possible. Now that the terror bombing campaign is ending, the reconstruction of Russia can begin. New factories, new schools, new courthouses, new churches. The Republic citizens are strong and hardworking. A new Republic is within reach, Kostya Jinpaz. It is my belief that this Republic can reunite Russia, chosen as candidate for a esteemed coalition, and elected president of the Republic. I vow to dedicate all my energy to a new Russian nation able to house generations upon generations. Our cause is just, and it shall take us to the Pacific Sea in the east, and to Moscow and St. Petersburg in the west. Thank you. To Moscow. And we're going to get point for our political power. Oh boy. This coffee's pretty good. So once this is gone, oh, actually, we get way more consumer goods and construction speed. Yeah, that makes sense. I can't wait till that's gone. Come on, Germany, collapse, 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 collapse. And Vosnesky's speech. After Kostyukin's speech came the president's turn. The president was the popular man in the assemblies ever, even if his star had dimmed somewhat as new politicians such as, such as Kostyukin and Stalina had risen. His energetic and driven way of approaching any topic had helped him lead his nation through a range of issues, and his a particular way of speaking had its usual effect on the assembly of making everyone in the audience captivated. Honorable members of the assembly, thank you for your presence. Thank you a million times for your support, for it was by your help that I could become president. And it was through your continued support that our coalition government has safeguarded Comey's citizens these past few years. I call once again upon your support for my nomination as presidential candidate. The Republic stands at a crossroads as shadowy figures emerge to the forefront of Comey's politics. Several sets of long-planned intrigues are reaching their conclusion, and their impact on the Republic promises to be an unmitigated disaster. I request a new mandate to continue the struggle against the snakes that wish to us usurp our institutions. Stalina was right in denouncing the groups of rabble-rousers that spread their poison into the veins of our parliamentary system. The time to strike is almost upon us. In the new mandate, I would bring down the might of the legal system upon those who scheme the nation's destruction. Our institutions can and must be reinforced so that no matter the amount of muck thrown by our opponents into its working, our republic will live on to bring our people to a bright future. Good speech, comrade president. And now we shall see the nomination. Uh-oh. The Yasuda Crisis. What falls faster? A man who shares. Gorky. Huh. Factories? Armor? Mobile bandits. Oh, you have, you have no focus tree. Oh, that kind of sucks. And the nomination. With the end of the speeches, a brief interlude came. The day had advanced as each participant had given their speech. More mediocre food was shared along with whatever good tobacco could be scrunched up. In side rooms, a few whispered conspiratorially. Was it true that Kostajun's speech had been a dig at St Stalina's expense? Were there indeed persistent allegations that the rising star of Comey's politics valued the safety of the nation more than its democratic institutions? Others discussed the rumors of a secret falling out between Kostajun and Vosnesky. All this theorizing was ended when the current vice president, Rodel Nov, called everyone back to the main assembly room. Voting was begin on who the Democratic coalition would run. Let's see who earns majority. Wait, what? Vosnesky wins. Really? Are, are we sure about that? Because, I guess technically in the center, yes. He does win in the center, because the center is moderately low. The right is overpowering, though. So... And actually, Kostajin Vosnesky's, Vosnesenskys, actually, not Vosnesky's, but Vosnesenskys, Vosnesenskys. I don't know, whatever. Uh, nothing compared. Uh, actually, Gumilov has more, but he secures the nomination. The news is a buzz after the president announces that he's been successfully renominated as official candidate of the presidency. Despite the numerous scandals and allegations of corruption that rose from Vosnesenskys, or Ski's second term, it seems that the common voter has not abandoned the People's Democratic Socialist Party just yet. People seemingly do not wish to rock the boat, especially a boat as seemingly fragile as Comey. Vosnesenski has announced that he will continue the republic's transition towards socialism, although experts are skeptical. Over his two terms, Vosnesenski had liberalized several financial sectors and implemented a limited market economy within the republic. Public. Bosnesinski campaigning seems to be aimed at attracting the left and right back to Comey's largest Democratic Party, who in recent times had either moved to other parties within the Democratic Front or moved out into the Socialists. It remains seen whether this will be wholly successful, but the polls seem to favor Nikolai once again. Onward to the polls. Uh, I'd so like to cut guys cut ties. I should have cut ties before, so then Miss the President would not win, but at the same time, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. Anybody got loot? Oh, Vyatka. Vyatka, my beautiful Vyatka. On guns and giving. Mikhail Voronin was a powerful figure to many. Having served long in the front lines against the Germans, he did not have 
He may not have been an officer back then, but by God in heaven did it allow for some heavy qualifications to be given to him in the election for leadership in a small village. Plus, being a father helped a lot in being able to know what it meant to do good things for community. However, it almost felt as if none of that mattered in these next few moments, or all of it mattered. Boron then, sure as heck, didn't know anyone anymore, as the caravan pulled into the snowy thicket. Out of the middle car stepped a certain Mr. Lagunov had been tasked with meeting the one he was meant to coordinate an arms deal with. However, with potential death on the horizon thanks to his lord's attacks against the people of Zla Zla Zlataust, Mikhail Zlatanshir. So, Mr. Lagunov, I know that the sales are currently off the table for today. However, with Mayoral Consul Dragunov's expertise and wisdom, perhaps there is a chance we can come to an agreement, Mikhail said. Of course, his bright smile could do wonders for many, however. No level of falsified pleasantries could mask the anxiety riding or ridding Mikhail's spine. Your people will get their guns, don't worry. The mayor consul approved of further transactions for the near future with your people. We shall meet in the same spot bi-weekly. You'll get guns, you'll pay us, got it? Mikhail, suffering the effects of shock, nervously and dread, was amazed by the success of the operation. Absolutely, sir. Whatever you need done, we can prove... But before Mikhail Boron then could finish what he had to say, the guns dealer was already turned around and heading back to his caravan as the fierce engines blitzed against the rushing snow. All is forgiven, I suppose. That's what we did buy infantry equipment, and it was successful, surprisingly. But then we try to buy, I think, actually, off-screen, I tried to buy some anti-tank. Yeah. Or the man pats. Didn't go through, so, hmm. Sucks. That's why I'm kind of apprehensive to do it. It's only 10 political power, of course, but, hmm. Industry, free repair. Ooh, even more output. Yeah. We gotta keep focusing on, focusing on industry. We could go this one. We could do that one. I don't know if we're really gonna be building military stuff for now, but let's go practical industrial administration. So once we get this one done, we're probably going to focus more either on infantry weaponry, individually, or land doctrine. Now, I'm not really sure which one, but for 10 political power, we could do that. Mm, I still want to suppress the left, but it's they're completely irrelevant. I can't suppress the center because, well, we're kind of leading the country. So, you know what? Let's try it again. Let's try man pads. Sells 150 units of man portable anti-tank equipment. Because after that, I'm done with them. Probably. Come on, scavenger loot. Ooh, we currently have none, though. Very good, very good. And the assembly. The election day preparations. An election is not something that can be organized on the spot, even if the radicals believe otherwise. We must not begin the process of writing the poll booth, setting up flyers, organizing locations, and more of the standard procedure that bores our legislators to no end. As usual, we will call up ready volunteers to do their duty to democracy and do these tasks for us. In all of this, of course, we must also be aware of the radicals, for the idea of preparations is something much more sinister. Oh boy. And we're only slightly divided. Oh, national socialism, huh? Well, what about Ordo Socialism? Yeah, we got fascists, you got ultra nationalists, you got national socialists, and then you go to libertarian socialists under Zidanev. Then you have the president with almost no support, and Alexei, which has a little bit of support, Svetlana with a little bit of support, and a little bit of support for uh, Daddy Clockman. Hmm, I can't wait. I just. It takes so long to get him, because there's so many events that I read and that's just part of the experience someone said maybe you shouldn't read everything mr mocha lover just especially regarding like the political events with other people but i'm like that's kind of the comey experience just going and reading through all of these events here so and we have elections ensure internal stability stability prepare for the bombings nah actually you know what? let's do protect the people first and then maybe we can decrease their influence a person should always feel safe in their own homes whether from the outside or out inside or out whether they while they do not dare touch our cities bandits and thugs have been known to roam the countryside seeking to rob and maim their to their hearts content in addition the german bombings have been a constant source of casualties blasting apart anyone that is unfortunate enough to be near their dastardly weapons people cannot vote if they're busy with other things such as surviving Therefore, we must embark on a program to cleanse the bandits from our countryside, guard our borders and any foreign incursions, and defend ourselves from the air raids. Only then shall democracy flourish. And we can do get some forts. Election day preparations. The time has come to prepare for elections. A lot has to be done, and we have to make sure that we do it right. Polling booths will need to be set up, and counters will be needed to be hired. We must ensure the election day goes as planned. Of course, we are presented with a few options to make sure the elections go through how we want it to. We can make it easier for our voters by easing up on registration and making sure we have enough polling places. We also make sure everyone stands up with a chance to vote. However, that would come with the cost of giving the opposition radicals too much power. It would be safer to invest in some voter suppression in polarized neighborhoods. That means we wouldn't need to worry about some undesirable people starting to meddle with our democracy. We need to make a choice, and our democracy very well could hang in the balance. Where democracy people need to vote... What happens, or what harm could be a little suppression do? Ooh, decreases the influence of the right and the left? Well, I don't want to increase it to the right, so increase the center a little bit. Because then, we're using this, and actually, ooh. Oh, we're going back. Oh, yeah, we're going straight back there. Sweet. I love the order. Order. 
was it 1866? That's a PS4 game. A very short PS4 game. But so we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this focus done first, and then we're gonna supp suppress the left, which actually gives you more influence on the right. So that's what I really want because I don't want this to get too high, even though we're already doing really, really well. But just in case, you know, just in case. And since we get a couple more days, watch the radicals. Let's ensure internal stability. In recent days, it has been reported that a party is a mess in certain areas, such as the fact that debates over sometimes trivial things can run hot and wild between our deputies, as well as growing factionalism and refusal of cooperation between party members. While normally this has been allowed under the perpetra perpetrator's uh, defense of freedom of opinion and expression, the us upcoming election is one of the most critical in our history, and the Democratic Party cannot permit these problems any longer. Uh, through distinct methods, we shall ensure that everyone sits down and shuts up, united as one party. No longer shall the chamber erupt into argument over every other speech, and no longer shall we tolerate the cracks between our wings. We shall be as one together, we must be, for the radicals shall come out as one as well. Political power and stability, good. So we did that. Let's go ahead, so this is slightly more, still gonna, we can suppress the right, but that'd be kind of stupid at this point. Suppress the left. So we have a hundred, it should go up a little more. We spent some political power. It is what it is. I just want to beat up these guys over here. And another event? Soon. And tribute. Oh, they paid the tribute. Oh, great. They actually paid for it. Which means, basically, we got this for free. Nice. And equipment. Oh, yeah, I definitely go with equipment. Equipment is just so good. I love equipment. Still have only seven factories, which kind of sucks. Not good, not good. Support equipment looking okay. Uh, what else? I wonder where we're going to get our man pads. Mikhail, irrelevant, good, significant. Uh, actually, Kosygin's influence is pretty low. Actually, it's pretty similar to the president's currently. Stalinas is pretty low. Kaya, elected prime minister of Japan, huh? Ooh. I don't mind hastening recruitment standards. We do get more war support. We already have 20,000 soldiers, though. But that's going to go bye bye very quickly. Very, very quickly. When do we get our man pads? Yeah, I'm going to do industrial investments just because. I, I, we, need, we need more factories. We need them. Ooh, scavenge for loot first, though. So. You only get 0.65, that's okay. And calculating the bombing intervals. Each and every week brings hellish Armageddon down upon our lands as the Nazi bastards rain down their bombs upon the people of Russia. New orphans are created every day and hospitals always fill to the brim for days after, especially Tuesdays, for that's when the, uh, they all come. The Germans are as predictable as they are evil. It is no coincidence that the bombs always rain down at specific times and more on certain days than others, that the Wehrmacht seeks to enjoy the little coffee breaks at their designated hours and days and not any other. They will not stop our little democracy. All it takes is a little calculation, and any interruption of the election shall no longer come from the air. Yeah, hey, we actually get more war support. That's kind of cool. A place for all of us. Well, we'll see about that. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's see what happens. We lose consumer goods, but we've always lost consumer goods, so it doesn't even matter. I really like this one. I don't know why. Actually, we probably should cut ties. We are honestly... Actually, if we do that, we I think we lose political power, so maybe we shouldn't. Actually, do we have to? Nah, we, all that matters is we empower the right, I think. I'm pretty sure, because then, eventually, spoiler alert, we coup the government, eventually. So, with what happens. Man, there were so many events earlier, now it's kind of like... Where do they go? But watch the radicals. The radicals have never believed in the democratic process, even if they say otherwise. Well, they've been rather quiet in their days leading up to the election, and it's always possible that they may come out of the shadows at any time. The chess masters on either side have always have aces up their sleeves, and there's no telling exactly what they have in store. Observations of the paramilitaries are necessary. Any left-wing or right-wing activity will be snuffed out and found. If they have any funny tricks they wish to play, we shall know, and we will fight back. Prepare for the bombings. Now comes the time to decide the location of where the polling places should be. There are many safe locations where polling booths would fit right in. Places that are safe from German bombers and political extremists. While we definitely will make use of these locations, we do have some more, less, safe choices. We could always make some strategic mistakes and put polling places in disagreeable neighborhoods as more exposed, dangerous locations. That way, we could discourage some people who might not want to vote and ensure that the safety of our power in the elections. Every voter deserves to be able to vote safely. Our power must remain secure. Decrease the power or influence of left and right. No. Every voter deserves to be able to vote safely. Yes, give me that political power. Love it. So we can't do anything there. I doubt we'll be able to get the poverty one. Actually, how's the poverty one doing right now? Poverty? Four a month. That's going to be so nice when we actually get there. Oh, I love it. For now, though, I want more manpower. That's okay, though. That's really not great. For 75 political power, you get 1,000 more manpower. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Infrastructure would not be bad. External in investments. What is that? What does that do for us? 10% uh, minus consumer goods. That's not bad. Secure control. Uh, it's yeah. I, I gotta get more stability. I like stability a lot. Here we go. And then you know what? I might just do this one as well. Zidane of eh, more manpower. We could probably. We honestly probably could use that manpower. Go and grab that too. Hey, transistor is nice. Yeah, actually, we're moving along pretty darn quickly now since we don't have to uh, read a bunch of events. But that's okay. Uh, into the unknown. Months of rigorous preparation, days of campaigning, enjoy it or dread it, participating it or fleeing from it, the election comes all the same. Now comes a trial of democracy and the ruling with it. Each and every preparation that we have done for this event will now either pay off or let us down. This critical election decides our fate and the future. Some doubt our chances and others wish us see us dead. But no matter what happens, democracy will always prevail in the end. It might just take 200 years to get to it. Taking note. We must keep an eye on the radicals and ensure they don't subvert the election process for their own goals. They can't be given the chance to sabotage our entire democracy. Their every move will need to be closely scrutinized to ensure the safety of, of our elections. Who knows what the communists or fascists would do if given the chance. They very well could corrupt the process and take power themselves through manipulation and intimidation. To keep a close watch on the radicals, more informers will need to be placed within their organizations. Perhaps a few bugs in their telephones could also do the trick. We must know the other plans before they can take any action on them. Put a bug in his house? Communists should not expect privacy. Oh, we're going to political power anyways. Decrease the power of the left. It's almost... Ex it's it's 10. It's so little. And Zidane's ploy. Alone in a Dakov on the outskirts of a Siktivit car. Andrei Zidanov was smiling as he was going through his papers and documents. Yes, it was all there. He wrote a note to his secretary detailing how to distribute the files to the correct recipients, then stopped and looked at his desk at the framed photo of him and Boznesetsky or Ski drinking coffee, or at least what passed for it these days, at the very same Dakov 40 years earlier. Quite clever, wasn't I, Nikolai? Poor trusting man, you never had it in you to fully separate public and private life. His smile faded. Had you been wiser, you would have tried to end it sooner, but your pride wouldn't allow you, would it? You wouldn't have done the same in my position, which is why it had to be done. We must all get something for the Republic, for Russia, for the Revolution. He sighed and flipped the picture to face down, for picking up the next pile of documents to be leaked to the press. On his way out of the door, he cast a glimpse back over his shoulder before flipping the light switch. Goodbye, old friend. Then the light went out. The door closed, and the moment was gone. There was no friends in politics. Ooh. Oh, his dealings. Oh, look at this. Hey, it's time for your uh, monthly beating order, St. George. The beatings will continue until morale impl improves. So you better, might as well just enjoy them. And his dealings. A series of devastating leaks have hit our government, seriously disabling our authority and possibly crushing our chances in the upcoming election, which I thought we just had. Oh no, we did not have them yet. The leaks alleged and proved with several hours worth of audio tapes, pictures, and official government papers that the president has been involved in abuse of his position from the very beginning of his presidency in order to cut deals with the Communist Party for votes and possibly personal favors. Some of the actions, like this awarding of supposedly open contracts to communist affiliated cooperatives, are flat out illegal. The DSMP is in full damage control, trying to m trying to avoid an impeachment push led by the enraged passionary. Well, the coalition is reeling, the KKP, on the other hand, had no comment on the matter beyond stating that there's nothing in the leaks proving that the communist leaders involved, most prominently Zadanov, had any knowledge of how the gifts from the president were done illegally. The president himself has locked himself in his office where he has been trying to call somebody all day without luck. Our administration may be history. Oh, look at- Oh! Oh no, we already have minus two. The people's faith in the government, and especially the DSMP, shall collapse. Why does this happen to us? Why is it always us? Minus 15% stability? Are you kidding me? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad we got more manpower for now. And we do have about 10 days left with this thing here, so. Why must you pain me? Why? Why do you hurt me? They, they, they like to hurt us because we're playing TNO. And I, we kind of enjoy the hurt. Some good coffee. And they, hey, they pay the tribute. Hey, we got some political power. Ooh, actually, we got to use it before we lose it, right? So, industrial expertise, that's not great. Ooh, was it research facilities or basic literacy? Hmm, research speed, basic literacy. Actually, we do get a little bit more output. Outdated stuff. Yeah, let's get more output with academic base. Actually, let's close this first. And schools. That'd be good. And before that goes, well, we could suppress the left, but at this point, they've only 13. Doesn't even matter. Encourage file sharing. Here's the center. You get more stability, less war support. Oh, actually, if you do this, basically you get 20 more political power, which would put us at 49, which means we could do something for 50 over here. You know what? At this point, increases the influence of him. Eh, nah, I'm kind of okay. War planning, political campaigning. Screw it, let's do it. It's it's too late to really change things, so let's do that. Now we got, oh wait, 
Oh, we have to wait five days. Oh, crap. That was a bad idea. Well, my bad. My bad. Well, at least we get some more political power out of that in the end, I guess. It's not corruption, it's just the way things are done. Uh, you know what, screw it, we're just gonna take the hit. It doesn't matter. There we go, minus 175, 4, 5, whatever it is. Whatever, it's only election stuff, right? It's only elections. No one's gonna die in the end. Into the unknown! The violence at the polls. We've received news of severe violence erupting in many of our polling locations in total. Three people have been killed and 19 have been wounded by paramilitary violence. This has started to discourage many other voters and some of our polling places are even closing down. It's not, un it's not known if, the if it was communist or fascist paramilitaries that carried out the attacks, as well as it could be very both of them. If the goal is to scare voters, it definitely is working. Although, this does not mean that we're only scaring away our voters. Unfortunately... This is not bode well for our election process, and we may see much less voting than we expected. Paramilitary threats, combined with the fears of German bombers, even after all the efforts we took to keep the polling places safe, have influenced many in their decision not to participate. An unacceptable violation of their rights. And reports of threatening rightist activity. More violence has begun to grow as more paramilitaries are taking to the streets. We have now reports that the rightist extremists are intensely looking, protesting our administration and the election. They're claiming we have illegally taken action against their movement and ideology by hurting them in the elections and stopping their supporters from voting. Now these militias have begun causing large amounts of violence and conflicts with paramilitaries and police have begun to spiral out of control. The rightists are all just declaring the election as rigged even though the election is not yet over. This has hurt the legitimacy of our elections as it appears we are deliberately trying to keep the rightists out of the power. Supporters of the right-wing parties are even calling for the resignation of our government. Our police are still trying to keep the violence confined to only limited areas, but it appears that the paramilitaries will do or will only continue to gain strength until the elections are over and the government secures power. Okay, well, I'm not going to lose stability. Not yet, if I don't have to. Nikolai, why did you do that? Why? Why did you do what you had to do? Hmm. I, oh, third inauguration of the president. Despite it all, Vosnesky stood before the legislature as president once more. Was it because of a desire not to disturb Comey's fragile peace, or was it because of the hidden quality the president possessed that made him stand above the other candidates? Either way, Vosnesensky was now president once again giving an inaugural speech before the legislature was once more. With his speech, the president laid out his plans for Comey's future. My fellow citizens of the Republic, we must seek unity, not strife. A Republic must stand strong and united against those who would seek to destroy it. Whether these threats come from or without or within. We must stand united and strong under the banner of democracy. We must stand strong under the banner of Marx. The DSNP and myself seek the establishment of socialism within our republic. And under my second term, we will continue to prepare Comey for a transition towards socialism. Under the party, Comey has seen remarkable progress, and continuation of our programs can only improve, further improve Comey in order to make it truly great. We must stand against factionalism and against those who, can, who seek to divide us. We must stand against subversion and bloodshed. We must stand together, together for Comey. We must stand for the republic. While well, certainly a passionate speech, some critics are worried that this man means that the president wishes to simply stay his previous path and are worried that Comey is destined for yet more scandals and more, yet more corruption. Nevertheless, only time will tell the president was the right choice for Comey. The people have spoken, and well, well they're not going to speak for long. And you know what? Even though we have all this negative political power, at least we're getting more political power by not doing a focus. I'm just worried about these guys up here. Because they're all authoritarian socialists, authoritarian socialists. Iberian announces the creation of the Iberian Council, authoritarian socialists. So these guys make me very worried. However, I do have some comments from another video or from people in my Discord or just from you guys that Samada is usually pretty strong in unifying Western Russia. So we'll see what happens. Minority rule. The results of the elections are in, and our democratic coalition has been declared the victors. However, there's not enough seats in the legislature to form a majority. The rightists have become a huge power after the elections, and they are almost in clips of the entire government. We've been forced into a minority rule, stuck with cooperating with the rightist extremists. This makes it much more difficult for us to actually move forward with our agenda. With a large rightist opposition, we will have to appease the far right if we want to get anything done. This makes it much more difficult to stabilize our government after the election turmoil. Some of the new legislators were even caught during the election alongside paramilitaries and militias. The far right has gained considerable power. At least it wasn't a total loss, right? Right? Well, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, I could go to war with the Yatka, but I want to go back to St. George and beat them up some more. Yeah. It's overpowering. Irrelevant. Very low. Low. Irrelevant. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And we're stuck at 29% stability. Jesus Christ. I can't even scan for, for loot now. 
the critical point. It appears that we have seriously underestimated how unpopular our administration is. Protests and riots are getting more violent as our police force cannot handle the growing number of people in the streets. There are even reports of far-right attacks on members of our coalition. Paramilitaries and militias from the far right have even gotten into several armed conflicts with the police. With the chaos growing, we are beginning to suspect an incoming far-right fascist coup. There are reports of rightist party leaders planning a march on the legislature building and other government offices. There are also reports of soldiers disobeying orders and even joining the paramilitaries. We must act before the situation goes out of control. There is a large possibility of the disloyal parts of the military joining with the militias to coup our leadership. We have to secure government buildings if the riots are planning to strike. We lose even more political power, but this we get a new focus tree to talk about. I just want to scavenge for loot. Political instability. In order to ensure that a regime is stable and we are not cooed or counter cooed by our enemies, we must keep things as tightly under control as possible before we restore order. If our legitimacy reaches zero, then we will be unable to maintain control and a coup will be carried out. It is critical to take all possible measures in order to prevent an overthrow of our order. Our current legitimacy is 24, which is extremely low, and it decreases by one every single day. Most likely the threat comes from the right wing, the right wing is currently extremely threatening, the left wing currently basically doesn't even exist, and the center is in power. And victory for democracy? I just want more political power. After countless every vote, it turns out that the Democrats have received a plurality of the vote. Even more surprising to Comey's citizens, it seems that the moderates have decided to go it alone. Without a clear majority of the delegates, the resulting government is destined to be an extremely weak one. Yet the party of the center-left to center-right have decided to gamble that neither the far-left nor the far-right will dare to cause a vote of no confidence so soon after the elections. Perhaps the far-left and far-right militias have given the government at least a month to live? Oh, man. Oh, man. I love where we're going to go now. Yeah, this is going to decrease every single day by quite a bit. All I want right now is political power so we can do other stuff. Oh, Free States of Magadan. I, I was recommended to play that. Honestly, I was recommended to play pretty much every single nation in Russia, but we'll get there. Protests against the government. Comey's population has never been content to bottle up its discontent in silence. Rallies, strikes, and a mass gatherings are a common sight on the streets of Siktivkar. There are many in the city who feel as though the Republic's leaders have failed them, and in this political moment, that number has steadily grown. Protests at once numbered in the hundreds now number in the thousands, a blistering array of demonstrations, some planned by a uh, community or labor organization, and some completely spontaneous, have paralyzed the central city. As citizens demand higher pay, better conditions of police protection, and other vague yet intense demands, most are relatively peaceful, but some have broken out into full-fledged violence, overwhelming the thinly stretched ranks of the police. Politicians, relatively isolated from the chaos consuming the streets, are starting to feel the pressure. Comey's already very serious problem with the radicals will only likely worsen, as a greater quantity of people becomes convinced that violence is the only way to alter the system. Among the nervous ranks of the elite, one thought predominates. If this continues, the Republic's very future may be at risk. How much more can the people take? Decrease their legitimacy? Cool. Ah, uh, why do we lose more stability? Ah, uh, war support's pretty good. Secure the Republic. I just want more political power. Stability and political power. Ooh, says Stalian speech. We lose political power. Preemptive assaults? Oh, preempt the assaults. Uh, so let's secure the Republic first. Barring some unfortunate extra legal violence by paramilitaries, the biggest threat to the new coalition government is simply a vote of no confidence by the fascist or communist de deputies. The new government's first order of business is thus to spend every scrap of influence and diplomacy to gather enough confidence and supply agreements to uh, stay afloat for the year. By guaranteeing that the government will not fall while trying to pass a budget, the moderate coalition hopes to gain some time. Well, I don't know about that. 0.46? Man, this sucks. I'm getting scavenged for loot. Hey, at least we can still beat up our neighbors. That's what I like to do. Just in case. Hopefully Vyaka can't do too much against us. There you go. Just in case. And we must secure the Republic. In which we get a standing coalition. Even with the vaguest assurances that the government is free from outside pressure, the internal pressure from within the coalition also needs to be kept in check. When living on the thinnest of political edges, a single deputy defecting could have disastrous consequences on the government. And so a generous amount of ministries and positions have, been, have to be doled out to every coalition partner, with the biggest political party keeping a few choice officers for themselves, or offices, for the survival of the Republic. Alexei Kosygin stares unenthusiastically at the meeting table. It is not the nice warm bed with a glass of warm water he was hoping for, especially after the chaos of the evening. The dossier on his desk covers an unexpected time Topic, blanketed on the cover like an obscene joke. Radicalism and Comey. He flicks through the pages, his frown intensifying at the red names and cancellations of some of the pages, uh, evidently taken from the Democratic Coalition's own census rolls. There are quite a few cancellations. Vosnesson's guy has a sm smile drip off his face, and he faces the assemblyman with a little more than a ghost of a facial tick. He has at least the courage to be honest, even if that, even if what he's saying will make the jobs harder than before. Morozov spoke to me this evening. After the end of the debate, he says that some of his men have lost confidence in the coalition. They're writing the letters as we speak, and after tomorrow, we will lose about 30 men. These men are, were, our majority in the parliament. We will move to formalize relations with the communists and the passionary party in tomorrow's session. There are still options. We are, after all, the incumbent, and our policies, while leaning on the majority rule, are not entirely dependent on it, and after that... He stops, but the meaning of his silence is clear. It is unthinkable. The Democrats have come plotting the rest of their opposition, and yet perhaps it is a necessary option. Kosygin rides a tide of opinion. He clears his throat. We should collaborate. They might be of use to us. They are radicals, and we are the incumbents. Ignore them. Hmm. Not bad. At least to be able to get more political power. And actually, 
Increases our le legitimacy. False charges are easy. Restoring democracy is not. Increases influence Svetlana. I want as much stability as possible in political power, so. We gain five. And Mr. Sh Hitler is dead. Bye, Hitler. Hope you have a good life. Oh, he's already dead. The defense plan. The Democratic coalition would not trust a fascist and communist with a bucket of warm piss, let alone believe their empty platitudes about respecting the minority government for at least a year. As such, extra precautions are being taken to make sure every single member of the government is free from extreme ideology. Equally important is being absolutely certain that no one in the coalition can be blackmailed, less assuring uh, the consequences be disastrous. Oh boy. Hey, look at that. That's looking a lot better. 0.64. So much better. Oh wait, look at this. Withdraw forces. Let's see, decreases by 1.25. Our legitimacy is non-existent. That's okay. Things happen, you know. Did we not get an event talking about the latest focus we just completed? Also, I apologize for the lag, but Germany is self-destructing right now. So, the Germans have a war. The end of the Reich, surely. It is thus necessary that the individual should do something said by Hitler. Well, maybe I want to read about that. Go right ahead. Mr. Hitler had some words to say. Selling speech. Let's do direct action. Left unsaid in the communist and fascist pledges not to overthrow the government dem democratically is the danger posed by the paramilitaries. What's a little coup between friends? To prevent such a catastrophe, a small cabal of coalition officials have begun to cook up some extra legal defenses of the republic. The communists and fascists fear one more another than they fear the weak minority government. They are surprised that seeing the benchwarmers lash out might just be what the coalition needs to survive. <sighs> Even more worse part, in these uncertain times, why not? Against the unrest. If we're to survive this avalanche of dissent that's flooded our streets, we need a plan. Currently, we control very little, and the dissidents control a great deal. With this in mind, there are two prevailing ideas that we can attempt to see this situation flip. The first is to simply see the majority of the territory, which we'll never be able to patrol completely, in order to build defenses and fortifications and crucial government buildings and factories. From there, we can begin sending out combat groups to put down any potential rebellions. The second plan is more offensive. The idea... The, 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 my apologies. The idea is to send out pacification teams to squash rebel activity in the more rebellious neighborhoods before any dissent can form. Whatever we choose, we must do quickly. Fortify everything we can to prepare the combat teams for ensuing riots. Send troops in the dissident neighborhoods. We can stop this before it starts. If we do that, that's just, that's just going to encourage probably more violence. Probably. So let's encourage more violence. We lose some manpower. We got plenty. We lose some political power. God dang it. Ugh. We're going to lose manpower anyways. Ooh, you do get more stability and more board support there, though. Decrease his legitimacy rate. Ooh. Mm. We lose. Honestly, I think this one's better. Fortify everything we can. Just because you get war support and stability. That's, 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 that's too good to pass up. And we lose less political power that way. So. Come on. I just want to beat up people. Oh, here we go. That's what, we, what we've been waiting for. And we'll talk about the GDP once we become a larger nation. Hopefully. Hopefully. Direct action. And then we'll do Chaos in Austin. Good. Uh, lose the political power, acquire the information. As the fascists and communists plot each other's destruction, the Coalition Government's Secret Security Committee has begun to ramp up its intelligence network. So Slav and Gumilov are slippery, slippery eels, yet many of their subordinates fail to live up to their boss's secrecy. By bribing small time agents of both sides, a sizable plot, pot of information can be built up on both factions. Speed is of the essence, as we, as is a simultaneous strike on both sides. The bombings now stop. For a very long time, life in a very large portion of Russia can be defined by the German bo terror bombing campaign. An entire generation of Russians had grown up in blasted ruins, always watching the skies, ready to run to cover the moment the dark figures of the bombers themselves are spotted. An entire generation of the government, whether whatever the ideology, has struggled with establishing infrastructure or an industrial base of any kind, and what little is built is often promptly destroyed. But not anymore. Millions of Russians have not had to make desperate runs to safety for days. Repairs to civilian and military infrastructure has progressed, and not even been destroyed in turn. New constructions still stand, and the realization is done. The bombers have stopped. To all those with access to information from the outside, it is believed that the civil chaos now engulfing the hated Reich and its colonial extensions in the Reich's commissariats have rendered it impossible for the aerial efforts to continue. To those without it, it is believed by many to be a gift from God. Even as ordinary Russians celebrate with something approaching delirium, however, others speak of dark clouds on the horizon. The many Russian st statelets, no longer suffering paralysis at the bombs of the Germans, are now free to look outwards. Only time will tell how they will proceed. Clear skies, dark clouds, beautiful. Can we actually build? Casa disappearance causes Muscovy turmoil. Can we actually build? By 67? By 65? In two years? Cool. Actually, we have negative political power, huh? Or negative 
progress. The direct action, the radicals and extremists hold a majority in our legislature and threaten to destroy our democracy. Radical par paramilitaries have been militarizing and arming themselves at presidential levels. The chances of a faction ousting our government are too great for us to remain passive. We must strike against the radicals and remove their fangs. The question is, what faction do we target? Both the left and the right pose a threat to the republic, but our resources are stretched too thin to shut down the both factions. We must choose carefully and determine who is truly the enemy of the republic. Cracked on the left, cracked on the right, cracked on the left, because the right can't do anything wrong here in this campaign. Let us attack the police station. Okay, that was surprising. They actually did to it. They did attack. What the heck? Uh, we can't see how much influence they have, but they have like ten, maybe. Residents of Central Siktivka were rudely awakened last night by the sounds of yelling and breaking glass as members of a left-wing paramilitary waged an all-out attack on a local police station, according to witness reports. The incidents occurred shortly after midnight. Somewhere between 15 and 25 masked youths, armed with bricks and batons, stormed the station, breaking windows and assaulting the outnumbered officers. Two officers were hospitalized, but the attackers ignored non-police personnel. Owing to the time, the station was significantly understaffed. Investigators believe the operation was meticulously planned to maximize chances of success. The investigators successfully fled the scene, but two were recognized by the neighbors and subsequently brought into custody. The police have identified them as Antoli S. and Bogdan P., members of the Workers' Street Battalions, a national, a local ultra-left paramilitary loosely connected to the Communist Party. Both have refused to assist officers with the investigation. Judging by the coordinated nature of the operation and its members' discipline, the possibility exists that this attack was ordered by the party higher-ups as a show of force, rather than being an impulsive move by radical lone wolves. Officer down. Um, I don't want to touch that yet. Nope. Effective strikes against the left. Our strikes against the left have been, have been a great success. Our forces have arrested several members of the Communist Party and seized weapons from leftist paramilitaries. During our raid, several armed caches and safe houses were discovered and secured. The left seem to have been unprepared for such an attack, and our forces have significantly limited their ability to perform a coup. The leftists and the revolutionary rhetoric no longer shall be threatening our government, and our minority government is at least a little bit more secure. Our democracy is now more secure. Well, and there goes England. Hmm. Cool. Expansion into Africa. Very nice. I'm thinking, do I even have to do this focus tree right now? Do I really have to? Ooh, the Warsaw Uprising. The Nazi Empire continues to crumble. Hello, Poland. Because even if we don't do this, we still get political power, which we do want to get rid of. Acquire the information, though. English Civil War begins. Great. November 63. And they paid the tribute. Great. Surrounding the neighborhoods. Preemptive assaults. Comey is strong and stable. You know what? I'm not going to do it. Because here, Hidden Heroes, we want to read that. Go right ahead. Our legitimacy is minus 0.5. Uh, oh my goodness. Into the files, in order to curb the influence of radicals within our republic, we need information to act upon. The locations of arms caches, incriminating documents, and the positions of paramilitary commanders. In order to learn these details, we must raid the headquarters of the Communist Party and Shafarovich's Passionary. These locations are public knowledge, and the informants within these buildings can help us find useful intel. While conducting these raids, we have two options for our strategy. The first option is to grab what only information our spies can verify so that we can avoid any contingency plans and false intel that the enemy may have planted. This is a less risky option, but it also requires more time and will result in less information being gathered. The other strategy is to grab as many files as as we can, sort out the contents, and act upon whatever useful information we happen to come across. This will make result in more information being gathered, but obviously is riskier. If we come across false intel, our forces could end up in stumbling into a trap. The question is, which strategy do we employ? Grab only what we can. Grab as much as we can. We can't afford to waste time. And the passionary overthrow the government. Oh! The rising shocks of the current government. Uh, if you want to read about the officer stuff, again, you can if you want, but I'm just going to go click on that. Thank you. Uh, the rising shocked the current government, beginning the, with attacks on police officers and local civilians. In Siktivkar, reports of violence streamed to the city hall all too quickly as gunshots and screams became louder, drawing clothes. Loyalists met the paramilitaries in the streets and alleys, but they were ambushed, trapped by a hail of fire from the windows above and below uh, from the cellars. And as they battled, so were the civilians caught in the crossfire. Confusion increased as units were lost in the depths of the city. Others were directed to the wrong places by the supporters. The battles became too intense, and men began to desert. But the passionary pursued them, even to the river, where men attempted to surrender, but instead paid for their loyalty with their lives. Bodies floated down the river as pleas rang throughout. Bridges were taken. Important roads were blocked, secured by patrols. The ways leading out of the city were sealed as those were getting in. Attempts to be made were or were made to break out for reinforcements or escape, but they were crushed. Soon enough, it was all over. They swarmed the hall, intimidating the legislature as they were opening today's session with guns and clubs. They arrested those who they had on their list, adding them to anyone who resisted or was thought to have resisted. Shots were common, and the bodies streamed out as those did who lived to be sent away. And the old government dissolved. They made haste to see the constitution instituted. Then it was declared that triumph made law as a cheerful Gumilev was sworn in as leader of the new government. With the legitimization of their overthrow, the passionary were now in control of what was once the republic. Our guide shall lead us through. I'm not going to do that yet because I don't want to get to the focus tree yet because I want to get as much political power first because we're going to need it. A perfect find. It seems we stumbled across a perfect intel, document after document, detailing the location of weapons caches, paramilitary commanders, and safe houses. All the information was recent enough to act upon... 
and barely any of the information had been encrypted. However, somewhat disturbing were the size of the weapon's caches. If we don't act upon this information right away, the enemy will be fully equipped before a coup. We need to seize these weapons and commanders immediately. Anything else is a dangerous waste of time. Luckily, it seemed that the radicals weren't expecting a raid upon their headquarters, so we should have enough time to strike before they act. Well, it's a little bit too late. Screw it. We're going to do this right now. And welcome to Ust Sisolesk. Oh, look, correct on it. Now, we have to deal with our legitimacy as well. So, the social sphere of permeation decreases our legitimacy decay, which I actually want to do. Ooh. By 0 0.5? 0 0.25. 0 0.5, yes. Before we embark on the journey towards Eurasia, we must ensure that our support base is secure. If we start building atop weak foundations, the entire structure will eventually topple. Uranists must be placed in key offices, propaganda distributed, and civilian supporters protected. So, basically, I think what we have to do is increase and make sure we're completely legitimate. Completely, absolutely legitimate, because we don't get counter -cued. We could scavenge for loot, but we gotta do this stuff here. Mm, actually, what we're gonna do... Ooh, we get more stability, we lose manpower, which is okay. Consolidate our power base. I want to decrease the rate of our legitimacy decay as much as possible. We basically gain and lose stability. We lose legitimacy. But, that's kind of okay where we're going. Because, even though we lower it, that's okay. Because where we're going, we're going to actually get daily legitimacy. Serbs drives up. Cool. And there goes Oslin. Goodbye, Oslin. Have a good day. And how's uh, these guys doing? Hadrius is Germany. Dernit sees Crimea. Burgund. Well, other than shot, Burgund has done a great job. And we can only get 0.81 political power a day. Cool. It's an interesting flag. Hey, we actually got some research. Nice. Get some more output. Horizontal Industrial Organization 1. Even though, even with all this chaos... We're still getting a monthly improvement of poverty rate of 4.75, so that's pretty good. And so there goes South Africa. I love it when things fall apart. Anti-government riots and sick car. The capital of the Republic of Komi is shiny, stinking. A rotten salmon in the moonlight. Cool air flows through buildings like hands through unkempt dollar bills into public spaces, dripping neon white confusion on the street signs and protest slogans. Crowds melt and ebb and gather vicious ephemeral. The new youth hang on street corners, their tongues echoing all variants of political thought. Tense times, tense city, Comey fears. Tonight... Hooded gazes, coming in packs, like hyenas stalking prey. Everyone sees a storm, though hail like rain falling in the distance. They come away, wordless is their engine. H hearts stirrings from the crushing and cracking city. Comey's machine, endless vistas or vistas, a flush working like gears. They are spanners, their time has come. Police guards, eyes held like pistols. Steady, unyielding, quietly lethal. Barriers flush in plywood, holding back the street. Whispers turn to talk, then he yells. Th thuds echo, not thunder. Wood on flush. Unmistakable. Points, screams, and all at once, an orchestra slamming into a new note. A sea breaking on undiscovered ties. Action. One, two, three shots, and the crowd overwhelms a pistol ear. As it sounds fades, new ones replace it. Windows shatter like chandeliers, falling from the ce sky ceiling. Here and there, trash cans let a flame, left to roll around. New justice for a court turned upside down. The government, the businessmen, the army, the Jews, suddenly all are enemies, and all must be brought to trial. Sictive guard is a court, a trial run for the people's justice, and it's Citizens are vengeful judiciaries. Nothing happens, rather, everything happens unseen. Street sweepers arrive to clear the flaming wreckage. Dirt smeared signs are clearly clear by noon. Everyone, of course, says nothing. This will not be the last. We know this. We lose even more stability. Decreases our legitimacy. Oh, that's not good. 0.75. We still have a good amount, though. South African War. Cool. Then the Reichs Commissariat, Norwegian. Reduced by 0.25 every day is pretty darn good, not gonna lie. And we want to, like, read this. Go right ahead. The Domino Shelf Stop. Increases our legitimacy, it gets the ability worse. But let's go do the social sphere permeation. The Russian people at large do not understand Eurasianism. Eurasianism. They deride us as esoterists, or worse, leftists, for our humane and progressive understanding of our brothers' ethnoses. Our message must be propagated throughout the Republic so that the people can come to understand what was, what it is we fight for, and why our cause is worthy of their support. So by doing this, that focus, we basically don't lose any more legitimacy. Which is great. Public discontent arises. What are laws, justice, or government other than products of a mass popular consensus? All it takes to destroy even these institutions that seem immense and all-encompassing is a gradual loss of people's faith in them. Comey's institutions are new and brutal, and in the face of a crisis legitimacy, they are starting to shatter. The public attitude towards authority has changed noticeably for the worse, much to the chagrin of Comey's police and elected officials. Neighborhoods are walled themselves off, driving away officers, and relying on each other and sometimes radical paramilitaries for security. The message is clear that people no longer trust the government to help them. If Comey's government is to survive in its current form, it needs to be reaffirmed to the public that it is able to protect them. As a slow collapse of police authority is in much of Siktivkar confirms, the Republic is a long way for off from earning back the public's trust. Cool, I'm going to put you right there. I can lower my legitimacy even more 
Because we're going to consolidate our power base again. Probably. If we can. 0.82. We're pretty low, but... Now it was reduced by zero. Sideline Taboretsky. Ooh. I don't know, man. Do we want to do that? Hmm. Let's get this one. Increase our legitimacy immediately. Highlight external threats. The enemies of the Pashtun are not self-reliant uh, like we are. The Democrats enjoy support throughout the countryside, while the leftists are almost certainly receiving support from the WRRF. We can use this to our advantage by highlighting the threats that come from outside Siktivkar. We can paint our causes more legitimately native to the Republic. Not a bad idea. As much as I want to do that so badly. Actually, can I beat anyone up? I want to beat people up. Come on. One, two, buckle my shoe. And... This is a bad idea for right now. Relatively low. But now, we get more legitimacy. Mine is 0.25. So we have low legitimacy, but every day, it's actually going to slowly creep back up. Even though this kind of hurts our legitimacy as well. It is what it is. And we get 10 more later on, so I'm not too worried about it. Highlight external threats. And we're now at 47 point some. The guns of Passionary. We have one of the largest paramilitaries in the Republic. Let us put it to good use. We have the central government buildings in our hands, but there are so many important bu public buildings, transport hubs, warehouses, and infrastructure centers that lie in the enemy hands. Let us send forth our brave Eurasi Eurasianist soldiers to claim what is rightfully ours. Cool. And we're going to lose some legitimacy, probably some political power. Stability. Actually, we got quite a bit of war support. 65% stability, huh? And shots fired near Internacional Naya Street. Despite the fall of the government, the Republican army has refused to surrender. Now resistance cells dot the countryside, engaging in guerrilla campaigns against our government and our forces. They are a direct threat to our government, but they are keeping us from securing our hold over Comey, and it's clear that we should have been more thorough during our coup. The most recent news to reach our government only helps confirm such a perspective. Apparently, one of our army patrols traveling between cities has been attacked. The corporates were Republican army holdouts who had sent up an ambush on the Internacional Naya Street. The encounter was brief but bloody, and our forces took multiple casualties. They were forced to return to the car, and apparently our soldiers failed to eliminate the rebels that attacked them. We need to send a more prepared force to snuff out this holdout, and we will be need to discuss the Republican problem further. They may be a nuisance, but they are not a threat. Increases legitimacy decay. Well, that's not good. I'm not going to click on that then. Not yet. Nope. I'm glad I got that one. We might have to do it a little bit more as well. But so be it. Whatever. None may contest. Oh, yeah. This will help out. So, a show of force is what we need. There are many citizens who still doubt the capabilities of our paramilitary. Of course, we are not Bolsheviks who will simply mow down dissenters. Instead, we can convince them of our might by launching decisive strikes against the foe and engaging them in open battle to prove, to prove our superiority. Critical instability. Advancing under arms. It was time to expand the newly formed Eurasian National Army, and Gumilov needed recruits. An army without soldiers was a pitiful one indeed. Gumilov had several options before him. He could use his newfound power as leader of the Republic to expand the conscription laws, although it could cause him unrest, and there was no guarantee of quality. Or Gumilov could, despite his dislike for the man, ask Sergei Taborsky to lend his elite stormtroopers to the Eurasian National Army, who had formed the core of his new military. The obvious problem with this plan was that the stormtroopers were, above all else, loyal to Taborsky. This may swear allegiance to some long dead Tsar, but Taborsky was their de facto leader. If it relied on Taborsky's stormtroopers too much, Taborsky could use his influence over them to take power. This choice was effectively a question of quality versus quantity. Expanding conscription would give him quantity, although they would likely take longer to be trained, and likely wouldn't be as effective as the stormtroopers. The stormtroopers may be comparatively few in number, and possibly political dissident, but their fanaticism made them a terrifying effective force. Need more soldiers for your draft? Elite stormtroopers. Aw oh, yeah, we get more manpower, we get some army XP, increases the influence of daddy clockman, and despotism. Aw oh, yeah. Minus 0.25 a day, that's fine. Actually, at this point, I'm just going to scan for more loot, so. Don't worry to the world, don't worry, we're just merely having some issues here. Five days left, that's not bad, even though we'll get this done next. And then we'll click on this one at the same time. Cool, the paramilitary is ambushed. Uh, Comey's myriad feuding political organizations have often come to blows. Bloody noses and broken bones are a common sight after weekend street fights between the competing paramilitaries of the far right and the far left. These clashes are rarely lethal, which makes the recent murder of several paramilitary commanders all the more shocking. Un using military-grade weaponry, leftist radicals assassinated three lieutenants of a street-fighting group associated with our government's forces. The boldness of this assault is unprecedented. Unpre the victims were ambushed outside a local restaurant where they had been having lunch scarcely past noon. The attacker threw a grenade at the establishment before gunning the men down with a machine pistol. He himself was killed in a shootout with their bodyguards shortly afterwards. Officers were able to find his identity, one Vasily K, and determined that the political affiliation through his possession included the Communist Manifesto, but he had no clear connection to the Communist Party or local leftist groups. This suggests either that he was a lone wolf or that he was a very good at covering his tracks. 
reports are already coming in of escalating tensions between active and militias, as both sides prepare for the possibility of revenge killings and a spiral of violence. The situation on the streets is becoming ever tenser, and law enforcement seems powerless to stop the killings. Ooh, increases our Oh, come on. Really? Legitimacy keeps going down. I don't want to deal with that. Hmm. I mean, right now it's still okay. It's relatively low. I think we'll be okay. Oh. Sideline him. Let's increase the support of the left. And the other writers are altogether too reactionary, or in Seraph's case, socialistic, for our liking, but they are not without redeeming qualities. Specifically, their loathing for leftists made them quite fanatically dedicated to the common cause of crushing the Republic's left wing bloc. We should appeal our shared interests so that we can rally more focus to the defense of our new government. That'll be good. Lots of national socialism here. And how's everyone else doing around here? They're, are they moving? Are they doing anything? No. We have had a successful raid, which kind of sucks. Launch to the San Marco A, huh? So we have eight days for this, which is fine. Common cause, and sideline Taboritsky. Taboritsky is a madman, gripped by the delusions of grandeur, but he has his uses. As the only notable monarchist in the Republic, like-minded men flock to his banner along with many of the Orthodox Church's more fervent defenders. He has thus a large contingent of well-trained, fanatical soldiers at his command. We could do well to court him. If we can bring him under our influences, perhaps we can sideline him more easily on later. Good. Hmm. 0.84 day. Cool. And we're probably going to get an event soon. 28,000? Not bad. Oh, we actually are demobilizing. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, actually, poverty rate helps you with your total effective manpower, too. I could do that, but... Mm. We do have one loot. The Croatian Winter. Sideline him. And which the Eurasia plan. We must remember that what we are fighting for, not Russia, but Eurasia. Our ambition is not to merely rebuild another stagnant, chauvinistic empire. We seek the construction of a new society, a new kind of global power. Eurasia will be a land that finds strength in its ethno-cultural diversity, united by shared historical heritage, the super-ethnos. Oh, cool. Wow, we got a lot of uh, army XP and reconciliation with the monarchists. Gumilayov sat in his office reviewing the letter in his hands. It was addressed to Sergei Taborutsky, leader of the Society for the Restoration of the Russian Empire, a minor right-wing faction. However, Taborutsky also had his elite stormtroopers, fanatics who would gladly die for the leader and his cause. Taborutsky was fanatic in his loyalty to Tsar Alexei II, who, believe, who he believed escaped execution by the Bolsheviks. This posed a number of problems for Gumilayov. Firstly, Tsar Alexander II was almost certainly dead, so Taborutsky's mental health could, not be, could be called into question. This meant that he could be unreliable. Secondly, Gumilayev was not a monarchist. He doesn't care for the Tsars, and he honestly just doesn't like Taborsky. In his letter, Gumilayev worked around the differences, appealing to Sergei's desire to see Russia's borders expanded to their peak under the empire. Some of these claims were natural, retaking Moscow, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan, among others. Gumilayev also made some more extravagant claims, including hinting at the possibility of annexing Alaska. Gumilayev felt ridiculous proposing such a thing, but Taborsky seemed like the kind of man who would make such extravagant claims. Was all this really necessary or worth it? Taborsky possessed some very little per elite paramilitaries, but they were necessary to, in order to overthrow the Republic. Tabriski was also a strong orator with a decent support base, including the monarchists and Gumilayev's coup could lead to a power struggle if he failed to keep them in check. Gumilayev still hold the letter in his hand, he could just tell his assistant to burn the thing and just do without Sergei's monarchists. Alternatively, he could send his ridic ridiculous letter to Tabriski and he hoped to accept the offer. Burn it, he's not worth the trouble. Let's send a letter, we need him on our side, but that's going to end today's episode because, like yesterday's video, we've gone over an hour. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we might see the creation of something new. Thanks for watching. Have a great, though, rest of your day.